Okay, welcome ID to the second part. In this part I'm going to show you how to animate your creation. And there's a number of animations we can do. The important thing to remember is that you animate in Inventor using constraints, aka the constraints that you put on your parts to like get them where they're at. For example, this wheel over here. If I clicked on this wheel and looked at where it highlighted in my browser, and I click on the plus, I have an insert constraint over here. And if I wanted to, I could right click on it, go over to drive, and I'm going to click on that, and it's going to open up like this small menu. And if I hit play, I can see what kind of animation it could produce. So if you take a look at that, it's kind of propelling it forward. So I know that this insert constraint can make this object propel forward and back. Um, and all it's really doing is just changing the offset um, over a, a duration of time. Or let's do another piece. I'm going to click on this yellow piece over here, pop this open, and I'm going to go grab this angle constraint, right click, drive, and I'm going to actually adjust the angle a little. I'm going to make this like 4000. Um, and you can always adjust the start and end. And if I hit play, you can see what happens. Um, that was an angle connection between the yellow and the blue piece. And since it was an angle constraint, it's actually causing the angle to shift in that piece. So it's essentially creating a rotation. Um, and I apologize for the little bit of lag. Um, my computer is running several programs right now. But anyway, we have multiple animations that we could do just from that. So, uh, what we want to do is we want our thing to do multiple animations at the same time. Um, and to set that up, what we're going to do is we're going to need to create an animation timeline. To create an animation timeline, go over to the in in Environments tab, click on that, and then you want to head over to Inventor Studio. Now Inventor Studio has a lot of cool things. Um, for example, um, we, we usually do like ray tracing to render an image, but we could actually just render an image by clicking on this button over here, um, clicking render, and it could render us a picture like really quickly. It's not as good as ray tracing, not by a long shot, um, but sometimes you just want a nice picture really quickly, um, and this render option is pretty useful for that. Oh, and there's a number of different like lightings and so on and so forth. Um, but we're, what we're here for is the animation timeline. So um, I'm going to click on that and you can do the same. It's going to say, hey, would you like to create an animation if it's the first time you're doing this? Go ahead, click OK, and it's going to open up a timeline underneath you, or like over here. Uh, default timelines are from 0 to 30 seconds. Chances are you're not going to need a 30 second timeline, so to adjust that, click on this little pencil over here and we're going to adjust it uh, maybe 0 to, I don't know, 10 seconds. So it will be a 10 second animation. Also, there's different kinds of speeds you can have. You can have the speed um, have a specific velocity or like a default, which you can see from this slope. It kind of like go, it accelerates, then it has a velocity or it has a constant speed, and then it decelerates. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to set a constant speed, so I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click OK. Um, if you look down now, your timeline has adjusted to 10 seconds, and now we can go ahead and animate something. So let's go ahead and animate that red thing over here. So I know that the insert constraint was making it move back and forth based on how I saw when I was driving the constraint earlier. So what I need to do first is find the part. Um, and it's not as intuitive as it should be, but if you just hover over the parts until it lights up, you'll find it, click on the plus, and there's that insert constraint. Now, since I'm in the animation mode, I can't drive my constraints like I was before. My options are different if I right-click on something. So I'm going to right-click on this, and I don't have drive anymore, but I have a new option called animate constraints. I'm going to go ahead click on animate constraints, and it's going to open up this start stop type deal. So here's how this works. Right now it's at negative two inches and it's going to end right now at negative two, meaning it didn't move at all. 
uh, but I'm going to adjust this. Let's say it starts at negative 2 and it stops at 2 inches, like that. Then I'm going to specify the duration, so I'm going to go to the Specify option, and I'm going to have this go from 0 seconds to, I don't know, 4 seconds, or 3 seconds, let's say. So it's going to move 4 inches in 3 seconds. And you also want to make sure this number here is 0. Um, that way, when you're starting a new animation, it will play right away. If you have a lag here, this is kind of like a lag counter, it will lag animations from one to the next. So I'm going to go ahead, click OK, and you'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to also, now that it's over there, reset the timeline by clicking on this Go to Start option, and I'm going to hit Play. And as you can see, the animation causes that one to roll out over the course of four seconds. I think I can do like a reverse play, and it goes out as so. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's bring it back now. So same deal, I'm going to go back to that part. Um, let me find it over here, this one. Uh, right click, I'm going to animate it again. And this time I'm going to go from not negative 2 to 2, but I'm going to go to 2 if it lets me. Let me specify a start time. Uh, 3 seconds to six seconds. Yeah. So I had to specify a start time first, so I specified it at three seconds because that's where the last one stopped at, and I'm going to say it goes to six seconds. And now it's going from two, and I'm going to have it go back, let's say negative three. So it's going to go back a little bit faster. Um, I got to set the lag counter over here to zero, and then I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead, reset my timeline, hit play, and you're going to see what happens. So it moves forward, and then it's going to speed up and move back, and a little bit further than before. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating you know, animation just by you know, adjusting the constraints. Okay, and while that's happening, let's get something else to move. I'm going to have this yellow clip essentially spin around the gray one, or I'm going to try. Let's see what happens. Um, so let's go ahead, find the yellow clip. There it is. I have an angle, but that's an angle between the blue and the yellow. Um, I have an insert, but I don't think that's going to do much. And I have some other things over here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to finish um, the animation. Um, I'm going to ground this gray rod over here just to see what happens. Okay, so this can't really spin. I was hoping that it could. It can move left and right. But I guess it's not really, not really a good part for spinning. Um, well, what about this part? Okay, this part spins nicely. Um, yeah, so I can see that it's spinning. I'm going to lock the spin by putting a, an angle constraint on it. So I'm going to put an angle, I don't know, from here maybe to here. I heard the click noise, so I know it's good. I'm going to hit apply with that angle. Okay, I'm going to go back to my animation real quick. So environments. Inventor Studio, and I'm going to find the yellow clip, there it is, hit the plus, go over to that angle constraint that I just put down, and I'm going to right click, animate constraint, and I'm going to have this go from zero degrees, I'm going to have this spin three times, let's say, so that's going to be 1080 degrees, and I'm going to specify the start time from zero seconds to I don't know, seven seconds, like that. And I'm going to turn off the lag counter here, whoop, to zero. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. So I'm going to reset the counter, I'm going to hit play, and now you can see that multiple animations are happening at the same time. Ta -da. Um, I still have a few extra seconds, so I'm going to reset this now that I know it's seven seconds. Reset that to 7, click OK, um, and I'm going to turn on this button. This is going to create a loop. So it's just going to keep looping over and over and over again. So I'm going to loop it, um, hit play, and now my animation is not only happening over and over again, but it's continuous. So it'll just constantly happen over and over again. So that's it. Um, we just created an animation. Uh, word of advice, 
be very careful when creating it um, because if you mess up animations are a little tricky to undo so like let's say I p overlap two animations with each other and I realized I didn't want to you can't just like undo it it doesn't quite work like that um, all the animations are linked in this option here called animations and it's inside this one here called animation one um, and there's no good way to like reveal all those multiple animations you created Oh, I guess they're over here. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could delete them from over here. Oh yeah, that's really convenient. Oh yeah, okay, they're under animation favorites. Yeah, you can just delete them from over here. Um, but if, it, if that doesn't work, then sometimes you might mess it up to a point where you just want to right-click and delete the animation and start fresh. But since I see these options here, I'm guessing I could just delete it and just redo it. So that would work also. Okay, so that concludes this uh, tutorial video. Uh, I'll see you back in part three for packaging and uh, parts list. Till then, peace.